Bookman from Book of the Month. The monthly book subscription box is here. Yes, that is me. Listen, I know Book of the Month comes through thousands of new releases. Like, you guys are just so good at reading books and, like, being like, yes, this book, people are gonna love this. Let's, let's put this out there. Let's give this to people. And more than that, let's deliver right to their doors. This month, I'm considering myself safe because I do not remember any big books coming out recently. And I already have a lot of big books on my TBR this month. This one's over 900 pages. Uh, quite... I don't know how to tell you this, quite the large book did come out and you were very excited about it. No, don't say that. You know I just don't drop these off here out of the goodness of my heart. You order them. Maybe just come back next month because I know I can skip. I know I can skip months at no extra charge. I came all the way here. Is it what I think it is? Yes. You cannot do this to me. Take it. Take it. Take the- Why is it so heavy? What about all the other books that I promised I'd read? I have no pity for you. It's Babel. It's set in Oxford. It's historical fiction. It combines magic, literary themes, and academia. Oh my gosh, yes. I picked the circus train. World War II circus trains. Uh, yes. I assume you're going to be delivering these to other houses within the US and Canada. And, and maybe if anyone's considering, like new members can use the code to get their first box for $5. Okay, well, stay warm. Hi. Ignore. Ignore this. I am feeling very under the weather today. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's COVID. I took a test. It was negative, but definitely gonna take another test later because I feel so not good. I wanted to film my December TBR to try and take, you know, my mind off of it and just have a nice relaxing afternoon planning my December reads because I'm so excited for them. I cannot be bothered to touch my hair in any way, shape, or form because after this I'm probably gonna go take a nap. Um, but this is also really weird for me because I haven't had a cold. I haven't been like sick aside from food poisoning, you know, anxiety vomit moments or concussion vomit moments since May 2019. That May 2019 was the last time I had a cold. This is bizarre for me. I haven't actually been sick for three years, which is great. So, I mean, I guess it was my time to roll around again, but regardless, this is going to be probably the most casual CBR I've ever done. I'm going to go through these shelves really slowly. I'm like moving in slow motion. I made some tea that one of you guys gave me. It was so nice. So thank you so much for this. Um, it's like green tea with ginger and elderberry. It's very nice for my throat, so we're gonna do it. I have been hoarding winter books for years, so we're gonna go through them all. here these shelves this one and this one hi are my winter shelves so let's talk about these first because these are the ones that are priority these are the ones that i absolutely want to read um oh crap the nutcracker by et hoffman is 100 first uh probably first on this list actually and it's only under 100 pages oh so i'm gonna read this I might start this today, actually, because all I'm probably going to do today after filming um, this video is sit on the couch with my partner, who's already passed out out there because he's not feeling well either, um, and probably read. So I'm going to put this down. This is a really gorgeous edition. I love these so much. And then I'm... Oh, crap. See, this is the problem. I have Hidden Sea by Gregory Maguire. This was also a gift from one of you guys. Thank you. Um... And it's also a Nutcracker retelling. I do already have one Nutcracker retelling on the go, but I just started last night. I'm literally on page two. Oh, 
but I want to read them all. So this one for sure, if I have time, but I'm going to put this one on the shelf for now. The Snow Child isn't exactly, like, I could still read The Snow Child in January or February. I think that would be fun as well, but Castle in the Clouds, it's become a tradition that I have to read this every year. This is one of my favorite books of all time, and I have to have to read it. I, like, read it according to the days that it's set on because... Um, this covers Christmas and the New Year. I think it ends on New Year's Day um, or something like that. So I think this is probably the one I'll like take home with me when I'm reading at my parents' house and I'll like read it on the days and then keep reading it into January. Yeah. Yeah, I'll probably do that. So this one has to go because I listened to it first on audiobook and then I read it for myself last year. And now I have an orange cat, so it'll just make it so much more special. This is about like a hotel in the Swiss Alps, and we follow Sophie Spark. Um, this is translated from German. I think her name in the German is Fanny Funke. Fanny Funke, if I remember that correctly. But she is a hotel maid, and um, lots, lots of things happen in the hotel. It's very Ghibli film. Okay, then we have Ice Fields, which I've already read. We have A Winter's Promise, Ember and the Ice Dragons, and Echo North. I think for now I'm gonna put Echo North on there because ah, this is like about a wolf. It's also a retelling of the fairy tale, oh, what is it called? East of the Sun, West of the Moon or something like that. It's about this girl who tries to find, or tries to save her father, I think, who's been turned into stone, is it? Um, he's frozen. Yeah. So she meets a wolf in the woods that he has to she has to live with the wolf for one year to free her father and i think it's full of magic and everything like that so i think echo north is gonna be the next one so we've already got three and then let me go grab the one i'm currently reading the one i'm currently reading is midnight in everwood by m.a kuzniar kuzniar i bought this last year Never had a chance to read it, and I just am so happy that I can finally get to it because this is also a retelling of The Nutcracker, but it follows this girl who's a ballerina and a new neighbor moves in next door whose name is Drosselmeyer, and um, I think he gives her the opportunity to dance in this enchanted forest every night. It's really giving me um, some of the same vibes as Entwined by Heather Dixon, which is one of my favorite young adults ever. That one is a retelling of... The Twelve Dancing Princesses, so I'm pretty sure she gets trapped in this other realm. Um, anyway, I'm on page, yeah, I'm on page two, but um, so far the writing is hooking me. I'm very excited to see what this holds, and yeah, so I'll probably read, probably read this in tangent with the Nutcracker itself. Does anyone else's cat like bark at them when you cough or sneeze? And does anyone know why they do that? Whenever my partner or I coughs or sneezes, Kelsey will go like, Kay. So I'm gonna be finishing this in December. Um, I'm currently 410 pages through, which is great. This book is over 900 pages. It's definitely been a journey so far. I'm really liking it. It's definitely hitting a really slow part at the moment, but this huge Charles Dickens book is about Dombey, 
Mr. Dombey, who just wants a son because he runs a shipping firm and he wants, like his whole dream is for him and his son to take over the company together, to just bond over running this um, very successful company. Um, I'm imagining him as like a mix of Patrick Bateman and um, the guy from Ratatouille, the critic, Anton Ego from um, Ratatouille. That's who I'm imagining him as, but uh, he does have a son named Paul, finally. But he also has a daughter. He's had a daughter for years, Florence, um, but he doesn't care about her because she's a daughter. And um, you just really follow Florence and everyone else in the family. Like Florence just wants her father to like admit that she exists. Anyway, so sad, it's so sad. And um, I think because we've been reading Dickens chronologically, like this is the one that's been packing the most emotional punch. This is the one that I really feel like he's finally getting deep emotional characterization more under his belt because before the characters were quite, they were just caricatures, they were really hard to connect to, but in Dombey and Son, I'm really forming an emotional connection to them for the first time uh, in his work chronologically. So yeah, that's great. I need to go through so many I'm just gonna make so many lists because you will see in my next weekly vlog, but I finally signed up for a Toronto library card. Best decision ever. So far I only have the digital version, like the digital card, but um, their audiobook library is off the charts. I currently have 50 holds, yes, because I have my, um, I have my regular library card for my hometown London and then I have a Toronto library card now so I'm like getting the best of both worlds and I would highly recommend I just high on power right now um, so I have a whole bunch of holds and of course I'm organizing them right now mostly um, geared towards the holidays and Christmas so the book I'm reading right now I'm 21% through is called Cold the Night Fast the Wolves by Meg Long this one I saw because it was on Libby this is the app. I use Libby and Audible to listen to audiobooks. I used to use Scribd, but I don't really need it anymore because I have these two. So um, yeah, this one I just saw floating around on Libby. And I didn't really know until I started it or looked it up on Goodreads that it's supposed to be, it draws a lot of inspiration from Balto, the movie. Um, I loved Balto, which is also based on a true story. The adult version movie I think is called Togo because the dog was actually called Togo, not Balto, who competed in the Alaskan dog races and then the dogs were used to transport medicine back to the small Alaskan town where children and a bunch of people were dying from diphtheria. So Cold the Night, Fast the Wolves is a retelling in that it's a very futuristic retelling. I believe it's young adult, it might not be, I'm really confused on that but it's set in a futuristic world where they're on a different planet called Tundra and the planet is just ice, barren ice, but it's also been taken over by the Corpos. One thing I will say right off the bat, it's just that kind of sci-fi book where if you, if I don't know, the author feels like you can throw so many different sci-fi words at it and it will be a sci-fi book. So the amount of times they talk about Corpos and I don't know, just slang. Slang for everything is a little, it's a little annoying. I'm not gonna lie, it's a little cringy. They actually have wolves that are genetically engineered. I think they're called Vannon. Vannon wolves is how the audiobook readers read in it. And the goal in this race is to take the wolves to this place where you can mine exocarbon, which is a very valuable resource. Anyway, I don't really care too much about that, but we follow this girl who lost both of her mothers to the dog sled. Yeah, the wolf, the wolf race. I gotta stop saying dog sled to the wolf race. Um, her mom's died in that race and so she wants nothing to do with it, but of course she's like, she's kind of become a scavenger. She's really poor. She's looking for any you know, work that she can, and so when she gets roped into, like, taking care of this wolf who's been wounded in, like, a battle because they also pit the wolves against each other, she eventually gets roped back into the whole thing, so, um, it's just okay. It's really just okay. I'm probably gonna finish it, though, because I just, I love, I loved Balto as a kid. I really did. I cried every time I watched that movie. Anyway, okay, and then... <laughs> so many other winter books. Okay, so let's let's talk about them. I'm gonna put them all right here. So we have The Twelve Dates of Christmas by Jenny Bayliss. We have Christmas by the Coast by Mandy Baggett. We have The Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. We have um, An Irish Country Yuletide by Patrick Taylor. So 
loosely, loosely know what these are about, but let's see. And like all of these, honestly, are probably pretty subject to a very quick DNF if, if I don't like them. So the 12 dates of Christmas. Um, we have a 34 year old Kate. Her best friend signs her up for a dating agency that promises to help singles find love before the holidays. Each date is more disastrous than the one before. Okay, wait, so she like, it's like a friends to lovers story, which I love because same. So like her best friend sets her up for these dates, but they all go so terribly wrong. But like, he's the one that I think the book is about because he's like her best friend. Anyway, okay. And then that sounds cute. That one sounds cute. Christmas by the Coast by Mandy Baggett. This one does not look good, I'm not gonna lie. As snowflakes fall, romance blossoms across open fires, ice skating rinks, and a tiki bar. Okay, Snow Queen by Hans Christian Andersen. This one is pretty self-explanatory. I've never actually read The Snow Queen, so I'm so excited. The audiobook is only an hour long. And then An Irish Country Yuletide by Patrick Taylor. December 1965. Tis the season once again in the cozy Irish village of Bally Bucklebow, which means that Dr. O'Reilly and um, their neighbors are enjoying all their favorite holiday traditions. This sounds wholesome. It just sounds like a wholesome, simple story. And then I have, okay, so of my 50 holds, some of them are Christmas, so let's talk. We have Duke Actually by Jenny Holiday. I feel like her last name probably isn't Holiday. Like a royal in disguise type of thing. Anyway, we have The Mistletoe Motive by Chloe Lisa. All of these, like, I really have high hopes. Uh, no. Oh, here's what I want to say. I want to have high ups for all of them, but I really don't. So, um, a lot of these are extremely wishful thinking because I'm probably gonna hate them, honestly. I also put on hold Christmas Days by Jeanette Winterson. I didn't know this existed until I saw it on the Toronto list. And this is a collection of short stories. Jeanette Winterson, I just, yeah, I'm so excited. I'm hoping it's gonna give me like Angela Carter and like her more halloweeny gothic collection but these are like winter stories from her so i also put on hold always in december by emily stone this one looks a little bit sad is that true oh it is every december josie posts a letter from her home in london to the parents she lost on christmas night many years ago this year her annual trip to the post box is knocked off course by a bicycle collision with a handsome stranger i also have one on audible i want to listen to this is my wish list this one Veins of Magic would be good. Dreamer's Pool would be good. This is way too long. Um, I feel like I kind of want to read Contact, Babel. This one actually, because I think there's snow and it's set in winter. So maybe this one. And I do own this one physically as well. Is everything I'm going to try and read. Wish me luck. <laughs> Wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Book of the Month for sponsoring today's video. And whatever you're reading this December, I really want to know. I want to talk about it with you because be nice because hopefully at the point this video goes up i'm not sicker but i might be and yeah i really am not feeling great so i'm gonna go lay down and yeah i'm wishing you all a very happy december i have probably some of um some videos that i've been like the most anticipating filming coming this month so i'm really looking forward to show you guys those videos once i get them done but yeah so anyway I'm gonna go drink the rest of my tea, probably make another tea, and clock out. So, yes, until the next one.